Good morning, everyone. And welcome to worship on this rainy morning, rain that we desperately need. So we give thanks for that. A few announcements for us all this morning. Um, Pancake breakfast again is coming up the last Sunday in July. Um, So we're still looking for help and things like that. So um, if you have questions, you can talk to Gail um, in the back um, after worship. Heart for Luther Park is coming up also on Sunday, August 6th. This is their annual um, fundraiser to support Luther Park Bible Camp. Um, And so we welcome you to come to the quilt auction or whatever you'd like to join. Quilt auction usually starts about noon on that Sunday. Um, The Taking Faith home inserts, I announced this last Sunday, um, again, are going to be available on the table in the narthex now, as opposed to in the bulletin. So if you would like to grab one, um, we encourage you to find those there. Any other announcements that I'm missing or that anyone has this morning? All right, seeing none, we continue with worship, and I invite you to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness, as you can find on page 56 in the green hymnal. And we began our service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray, most merciful God. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn this morning in the blue hymnal, number 713, Lord, Let My Heart Be Good Soil, and we are going to sing this through twice because it's kind of short and it's a lovely little song, so let us sing.
We continue on page 57. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and, exceed in the, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends the first reading. Psalm 65 can be found on page 242 in the Green Book. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. Thank you. 
To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come. Our sins are stronger than we are. Sorry, that's my bad. We're going to start at 9. <laughs> you visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. You prepare the grain. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You crown the year with goodness. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. Our second reading comes from the book of Romans. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who, dwells not, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here's in the, here ends the second reading. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on a path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. If you have ears, hear. Hear, then, the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of this age and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in, case, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, I invite you to be seated and invite any kids to come forward for a children's message.
Come on up. All right. So we're getting some rain this morning, which is good, right? So we think about the plants and the nature that surrounds us, right? What are some things that they need to grow? Sun, water. That's okay. There are lots of things, right? We need to also just care for them, right? We need to tend to them. And God does this in us too, right? God plants seeds in our lives. We may not see them. They may not be like actual seeds like you all plant in your gardens. But God plants seeds in our lives. He sends people to be with us and to love us and to tell us about God. I'm sure you can think of some people in your life who do that, right? Yeah. God sends so many people in our lives to plant seeds, seeds of faith, seeds of love, seeds of listening when you need someone to talk to, right? There's so many ways that God is there for us. And today, um, in the sermon, we're going to hear a little bit more about seeds that are planted. And I want you to think about some ways that you can plant seeds in people's lives. Any ideas come to mind? That's okay. You could just smile. You have a lovely smile. You can just smile to people, right? And they'll feel God's love. All right, will you pray with me? All right, you can all join me in prayer too if you'd like. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day and we give thanks for the rain that nourishes the ground and the plants and all of us. May you continue to work in our lives to plant seeds of faith and love so we can share that with others and feel your love in our lives when we need it most. In your name we pray, amen. All right, you know the drill. One to keep and one to share. Yep, so you can pick out, you got the pick. You have the pick of all of them. Thanks. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us. Love, forgiveness, and hope are within us. In the name of God who sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit to show us that we matter and we are loved. Amen. The parable of the sower. A parable that many of us know well and a parable that has great meaning for our lives together in faith and in community as the body of Christ. At this point in Matthew's gospel, we are now getting to a part of the gospel where there are parables galore. There are parables that Jesus told to his disciples and those who gathered as he traveled from town to town. But what is a parable? Parables are ways of teaching and a specific way that Jesus taught that used everyday examples to open people's eyes, minds, and hearts to God's work in the world and God's kingdom. Jesus uses parables to teach about who God is, and more specifically, Jesus reveals the character of God. Jesus uses parables to make God more accessible to everyday folks. Because, let's be honest, there are so many passages in Scripture that are so deep and complex that we are left scratching our heads. But here we get a real gift from Jesus. Jesus explains this one. This is one of the only parables that Jesus explains. And he offers his disciples and the crowd a better understanding as to why he's sharing this parable and what it means for them as God's people. So we hear the parable of the sower. This parable shares what happens when seeds are scattered on a variety of different surfaces, on a path, on rocky ground, on thorns, and on good soil. And if we think about it, the sower seems kind of reckless in the way that they spread the seed. They aren't taking into consideration what kind of environment they're putting the seed in. They just throw it everywhere. And I'm not sure about you, but that seems a little reckless to me. 
And what do we think of when we hear the word reckless? Usually it's a negative connotation, right? We think reckless means careless, without caring what will happen. But what if we turn our definition of reckless on its head? What if we think about God recklessly sowing seeds in us and around us in a way that means that God never gives up on us? What if we think about it as God offering grace abundant, love abundant? Does that change the word a bit and the way we think about this parable? When I think back on my life and the ways that others have sowed seeds in my life, I think that this new definition of reckless seed sowing applies. There have been many moments in my life that I needed those constant reminders of God's love and reminders that I'm not alone. I think about the ways that others have encouraged me to become a pastor. That wasn't one seed planted in just the right way so it would grow at just the right time. No. These were seeds thrown on all kinds of soil at all stages of my life. And it took those experiences and those people who kept planting seeds in my life to help me understand where God was calling me to be. One example that I can think of in particular is thinking about growing up in a church family. Seeds were planted in good soil when I was baptized into the family of Christ. Seeds were planted onto rocky soil as I went through middle school. Confirmation, as I was figuring out what I believed and navigated being a person of faith amongst my peers, facing peer pressure, growing pains, difficulties with friendships. They were planted, though, because my pastors Mentors and church members didn't give up on me. They were persistent in sharing about their own faith and about their own stories. Seeds were planted on thorny soil when I struggled in college, when I wondered where God was in my life. But even in the midst of this, seeds were still planted because my parents stayed by my side, walked with me, and reminded me that I wasn't alone. Seeds were planted as I had conversations, many, many, many conversations with mentors and friends about going to seminary and becoming a pastor. I had seeds planted in good soil, rocky soil, thorny soil throughout my life. And you all have too. Those seeds have made a difference whether you see it right now or not but it was because those seeds were still planted. It was because those seeds were recklessly and freely given. Those seeds and seed sowers were persistent in sharing God's love with you. This parable is important, and the end of the parable reminds us of God's God's promises to us, for us, and allows us to hope in those promises. And we have a job to do as well. It's our job to sow God's word and spread seeds recklessly around us. We may not know what kind of soil that those seeds will land on, but we know that the seeds are there. We may not see growth right away. It takes patience, persistence, love, and care. We can tend to the seeds we plant by planting them again and again in the lives of those around us. We can spread seeds of love, of compassion, of understanding and empathy, of justice, and of so much more. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we are called and equipped to go out into the world and share the good news of Christ's death and resurrection. We are equipped with the word of God and parables and teachings from Jesus to guide us, even if they aren't always explained by Jesus himself in a clear way. We do the work together. So perhaps, let us be a little reckless in sharing God's love and a word with others. Let us take chances and plant seeds in all areas of our lives with all people we meet. 
for it's through us that others can learn and know about God and God's promises. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, number 760 in the blue hymnal, For the Fruit of All Creation, and I invite you to stand as you are able. church together. So let us confess our shared faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed that you can find on page 65 in the Green Hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, we give thanks for the ways in which your word has been planted in us. May we continue to nurture those seeds and help to spread your word to others around us, sharing of your love, grace, mercy, hope, and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give us grace to follow the example that has been placed before us in Jesus Christ. Help us to serve others with compassion and understanding and to continue to open our hearts and minds to what you are doing in the world and in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you know all our hurts and sorrows. Give healing to all who need it in body, mind, and soul and inspire us to bring your love and compassion to all who suffer. Be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. May you walk with them in their mourning. We ask you to be with those whose names are on our hearts and minds and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we give thanks for the rain that nourishes your creation and helps life to grow and be sustained. We ask you to be with those who care for and tend to the land. May you continue to be with them in times of hardship and times of prosperity. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you hear our prayers, and for that we are thankful. 
continue to seek us and find us, to be with us in times of joy and in times of despair and grief. We know that we can find rest in you and in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who saves us, redeems us, and renews us each day. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor, and then we will receive our offering. Would you please rise? Let us pray our offertory prayer as found on page 67. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which, was, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, 
and he blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, poured out for you. If you commune in the church you attend, you are welcome to commune with us this morning. Gluten-free wafers are available upon request. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. You may be seated.
Would you please rise? And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Our sending song this morning is in the green hymnal, number 221, sent forth by God's blessing. <laughs> 